show you a really fun necromancer build I've been playing here in season two in Diablo 4. It's a really fun, interesting uh, corpse explosion damage over time build. And what it does is you constantly create corpses from killing monsters and from your lucky hit and it sends the corpses out and explodes and does lots of damage. The best part of this build is you can pretty much use anything you want for your lucky hit deliverance. You can use sever, you can use blight, so whatever you feel like playing at the time, you know, you're, you're going to get the good corpse explosion damage either way. Now, Blight does have an increased damage over time multiplier, a 15% one, and Sever also has vulnerability on every third attack. You can also switch to Bone Spear if you want. I mean, either way, you're good to go. As long as you're hitting monsters, corpses are being made, and they're exploding, and they're killing everything. Okay, before we go to town on the dummies, I want to show you what unique items this build requires in order to function properly. The first one here we have is Black River. It will work fine without it, but this increases the damage big time. It consumes up to four additional corpses every time around the initial corpse to increase your damage by 122 to 130% more. It's a huge more multiplier. So this increases the damage big time. I mean, it also has a lot of great stuff on it as well as plus four to ranks to all corpse skills. Has plus three to hued flash, which generates more lucky hit chance when you're hitting monsters. Now this item drops off a of Durio. Next, we have Ring of the Sacrilegious Soul. This is absolutely mandatory for it to be the way it is. This thing casts Corpse Explosion for you every one second. It's great. You don't have to do anything. If there's a corpse there, it's going to blow it up and it's going to kill stuff. Also, it has Corpse Tendrils every eight seconds. This one drops a Varshan. It's also a world drop. You can find it. I've found them before and a really great place for farming uniques is the Blood Harvest. Our third unique is the Howl from Below. This one increases the corpse skill attack speed, which is huge. It lets you cast them faster. It also is what sends the corpse running and makes them explode on the monster. So it greatly increases your clear speed by sending the corpses out, giving them homing ability. And another huge thing with these gloves is it increases your corpse explosion damage by 40%. Another big 40% more multiplier which is huge damage. Okay, now that we actually have some targets that we can beat on that have a little bit more life and we can see what kind of damage we can actually stack up with this corpse explosion dot. Okay, so you see we can get anywhere easily over 10 million damage per tick, up to around 25 million. Okay, I want to talk about the defensive aspects now. We got just your basic ones on your boots, you know, for like movement speed. Disobedience on your chest for a lot of defense is a very popular one, hardcore and softcore. Armor pretty much still rules everything these days. And then for your helmet, we have the Shielding Storm, which this is great. This is really good because each time that your Bone Storm damages an enemy, you gain barrier equal to 5% of your base life for 10 seconds. So yeah, you, you're popping Bone Storm off. You're pretty much topped off. You can pretty much survive any punishment with Bone Storm active.
And now the last item I haven't talked about yet is the lidless wall. This one is just really great for defenses. You got a lot of life, you got attack speed, you got a chance to block, you get armor. It's a good solid item. The attack speed is the biggest benefit because you can't get attack speed on a, any offhands. And attack speed increases your damage a lot with your corpse explosion. So I like the Lidless Wall. You can get this off of Lord's Ear. And it it's not mandatory for the build, but it is it works very well with it. Okay, now I want to go over the ability tree. Reap, you gotta put two points and something up here to get to your next part of the tree, obviously, but you can use Reap if you want. It, it's a useful uh, basic attack. You can use it for generating corpses every four seconds if you want. Then we want to come along to Blight here. This one's very important because when you get Supernatural Blight, you get a 15% more multiplier, so that's a huge damage buff to the build. Next we have Hued Flesh. This is really, really important for the build. This, your lucky hit chance, has a, up to a 24% chance to create a corpse at the target's location. And this is also double for bosses, so that's really big. That's what really gets your damage in big on the bosses. So you got a 48% chance when you have your plus 3 and Hued Flesh. Also, we want Blood Mist. You want at least one point in each, so... You want it in the ghastly blood mist so you can get an extra corpse every one second. That's another huge damage additive. And then here's our main source of damage, our corpse explosion. You get increased radius with enhanced corpse explosion and this here turns it into blighted where it becomes shadow damage. This is how we basically maintain full resources at all times consuming a corpse generates six essence essence is never a problem with this build you're pretty much blowing up and eating corpses at all times so you never really have to worry about it fueled by death gives us another 15 percent more multiplier for six seconds after consuming a corpse so that's another huge buff Okay, moving on. Next we have Corpse Tendrils. I mean, we only have one point in this, but we have 14 coming from items. Puts us at a 5.76 cooldown, which is... <laughs> it's good enough because the ring only casts it every 8 seconds. But we also have Plague Corpse Tendrils, which makes the enemies vulnerable for 3 seconds, so that's another big damage upgrade. Here's another source of uh, Fortify whenever a corpse is formed but you, we also do get more fortify from a glyph we'll talk about later here we have some uh, movement speed increase which is great 15 percent this is a really big thing this is what our our amulet needs to have we got plus three to gloom so this brings us up to double the amount of damage it adds so you get 12 percent more this stacks up to three times so with the level 6, you were able to get this up to 24%, which is another great damage boost. So that's a really good stat to have on your amulet to increase 3 levels of gloom. Next we have Terror. You deal 9% increased shadow damage to enemies who are slowed or chilled. This is great as well. Also for uh, increased shadow damage to people are stunned, immobilized, or frozen. We do have some vampire powers that do cause these effects to happen as well. And down here we just have the uh, Sacrifice Your Minion buffs, which is great. Here we have Inspiring Leader, which is also really good for the build. After you've been healthy for at least 2 seconds, you get another 12% attack speed. This build really benefits off attack speed, as we talked about earlier. The faster attack speed, the more corpses you can explode to stack up the damage. And this here is just basics, Bone Storm. Everybody loves Bone Storm, it's a great thing for Necros. You also get your damage reduction bonus while you have it active. And then Shadow Blight, this is what our main aspect works off of. It does do damage. Just want to keep in mind though, even though Shadow Blight, it does do damage, but not very much. But this 
keep passive is necessary for our main aspect to work and give us all the damage. All right, Book of the Dead. We want to sacrifice the Skeletal Warriors to get the 15% more damage multiplier for shadow damage. Mages, we want to sacrifice the cold ones to get the increased damage more to vulnerable enemies. Golems, this one's optional. You can go with Bone to sacrifice to get attack speed. If you're on Hardcore, or even Softcore and you want more life, this one's also good too. Okay, let's talk about the Vampire Powers. I saved one last unique till now because this works solely off one of our Vampire Powers, which is Metamorphosis. You also want to keep Metamorphosis at level 1 because you can use it every 2 seconds. Every 2 seconds when you dash, you also become unstoppable, which procs Tybalt's Will, which gives you a damage more multiplier of 20 to 40%. It also gives you 50 of your primary resource back. This is a very powerful combo, it's very popular here in Season 2. So Tybalt's Will is very simple. Basically, here you go. You just dash and boom, you get your resources back. Okay, our next two vampire powers work in conjunction. This is Flowing Veins and a Curse Touch. As you know, we're a lucky hit build. And as you see, everything always has Vampire Curse on it. This is your skull right here above. That means you have it. So as long as stuff has Vampire Curse, basically this ring works on its own it's constantly blowing up corpses each tick of the dot has a chance to apply it so if there's anything that's alive it's cursed and while it's cursed we also have flowing veins which is another 60 percent more multiplier which is huge so flowing veins and a cursed touch is very important in this build for the huge damage gains okay we have two more aspects that are pretty much optional but uh domination's kind of nice it does give a 20 percent more multiplier which is if they're immobilized frozen stunned or feared which you do have a small chance of this happening with these gloves here you do have a lucky hit chance to stun or fear so it is possible to get another 24 percent from that one and that's a pretty good deal for only costing one one point so it's pretty useful can't count on it too much but it can happen so it's a useful one another one is undying this is only one skull but with these last two your first three cost so many resources you really don't have a lot of options for your last two but i like domination and undying all right time for the paragon boards we actually have a pretty big setup here running a total of six boards First off, we start on the first board here with uh, Scourge. With Int placed in these sockets here, we have a total of 92% increased shadow damage over time. You also get a big more multiplier, which is 10% increased damage to enemies affected by shadow damage over time effects. Our second board we're cutting through right here. This is our Wither board. Just catching some... Uh, nice rare nodes on the way and then we're moving to our third board where we get flesh eater and flesh eater this is probably one of the biggest glyphs in the build this is huge we get a total of 207 corpse skill damage right here from exhumation and also consuming a corpse fortifies you again here so basically we're always fortified with this build if you're doing damage so it's another huge 10 percent damage reduction bonus and also adds another 4% on top of that. Also, yes, this board um, we have after consuming five corpses, you grant a 40% more multiplier for six seconds. As you can see, this build has more, 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 tons of more multipliers. So that's how we get such big numbers on the dots. Our next board is Sent to Death. Right here, we get a 15% damage reduction if there's corpses nearby, which is almost all the time. And you also deal 15% increased damage, which is another more multiplier with no corpses nearby, which is pretty rare, except for maybe if you're on a boss and you've 
pretty much, you know, sucked up all the corpses, which doesn't happen very often. As for our glyph, we have sacrificial. This one's actually one of those very useful ones where you get, if you level up to 21, you get a 138% bonus to all magic nodes. So down here, you're getting almost 30% increased damage to injured. So that, that's pretty huge. It's a, a nice bonus. You also get some bonuses to armor here. As you see, we don't take a whole lot. We just come up through here, grab that, and you're out. Okay, so after we get that board, we come back here to the next one. And we start continuing up from here. Then we grab this glyph socket right here. You put darkness in. That's another 72% increased shadow damage. You also get another more multiplier, up to 10%. Then you come up here to the bloodbath one. We really don't need pretty much nothing from this board other than we're just coming up for this glyph socket, which where we use exploit. So we get another 10% more multiplier for vulnerable enemies. It's another nice little more multiplier. Nothing really useful here. We're just pretty much using this board for the glyph socket. And our last board here is bone graft. Again, we're not a bone build, so we don't really get much from here. We're just coming in for the last glyph socket, which we put in Abyssal. It's huge. It's another big 10% more multiplier, but there's really nothing else much here that we need. Yeah, we just get a little bit of resistances. As well, we're just using this board to get one last more multiplier to add more damage onto the build. This one, you don't really need to level up. It doesn't do a whole lot. just gives you a little more resistances. And that's it for the Paragon boards. Well, I hope you guys like the build guide. This build may not be for everyone, but if you like playing Necro, I find it a lot of fun. I will have the uh, link in the description for the Max Roll Planner, so you can get all the information from there. And uh, if you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. I will now also stick around if you want to watch some of the build at work. I'll do some clearing videos.